<laughs> Hi. <laughs> oh my goodness. It's always so much fun when I um, am demoing on the large wisdom warrior. As you can tell, you know, she's, she's pretty long. That's why we love it. We love her when we're making our hat bands and our chokers and our wrap bracelets like we are today. Um, so I just wanted to go over a little bit, um, you know, just a closer look at how to add your cord. I'm using the repeat, the 1.5 millimeter repeat from Beadalon. It's a sustainable uh, cord that uh, is made from plastic bottles. It's super cool. Um, it's going to be laying on top of the grid because as you can see, you know, the, the, um, the little grooves, they, you know, they're tiny. They're made for, you know, like wildfire beading thread. I do believe I've uh, been able to get the 0.5 millimeter hemp into one of the grooves. So when you're working with something larger, uh, like the 1.5 millimeter repeat, it's just going to lay on top of the groove, okay? So I went ahead and I tied my cord to the back, uh, or actually this is the top button. And the knot, I always want the knot to be on the top of the button so that when I pull the cord or the beading thread or whatever material I'm working with, there's no lack. There's no, you know, like sometimes what I found happening is, say the knot would be way over here and then people would always say, hey, you know, I'm losing tension on that very first warp. Well, lo and behold, it was just that little bit of space that they weren't pulling tight on. And then guess what? There was just that little bit of lack in the warp. So get the knot, pull it towards you. And since we're only gonna be doing two warps, I'm just gonna work down the center of my Wisdom Warrior loom. And I'm gonna come all the way down to the bottom, I'm gonna prop up her top there. And I'm just gonna do an eyeball, you know, so I can see that I am pretty straight, okay? And then I'm going to, let's, <laughs> it's like, this reminds me of a time when I had to like, uh, I had a huge Tahoe, you know, Tahoe truck, and I had to get out of a very, very tight space. Um, but it had super awesome steering and I was able to do it. That's what I feel like when I'm maneuvering the large wisdom warrior, uh, for videos anyway. Okay. So the cord is laying on the grooves and I'm getting ready to wrap around, uh, the bottom button and I'm going to do it twice. So I come around once and then I come around again and I just do that to help secure, whoa, uh, the tension with the warp. That was cool. <laughs> that was super cool. Okay. All right. So I'm going to eyeball, um, for this particular project, we are skipping seven. I think that might be close. Let me see. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. I got to go over one. Okay. And then I'm bringing the repeat back up to the top and then I'll turn around because I've got my, my steering. <laughs> All right. And then all I'm going to do from here is what we would do uh, with our other loomed projects is I'm, I'm going to tie off. Um, I do just want to make sure that I'm skipping. It looks about right. Skipping seven. One, two, three, four. Yep. Okay. And then once again, I'm just going to wrap around the button once, twice. Now, when you're using a more expensive material like the repeat or leather, you really do want to learn how to best tie off with uh, the less, less waste, right? So, um, so try, you know, try your best to keep your tension. <laughs> What's the instrument? Let's see. <laughs> Is it a cello? <laughs> okay. Um, so yeah, so I'm going to just trim this. I, again, I don't want to waste this product because it is a higher end product and Oy. Okay, hopefully that's enough <laughs> for me to maneuver. And I'm going to save that, of course. This is also where, let me get in the screen. Sorry about that. This is also where I talk about um, having the flats on hand, the flat nose, because they can kind of come in as you're, see how that helps. And then I'll just go through the loop. Basically, you're just trying to tie off, okay? So don't like, like, oh, what is she doing? I'm simply trying to um, get a good, get a good knot. 
so that my warps don't don't um, come apart or get loose. So let's see. Let's see how that worked. Yep. Yeah, did we do okay? Awesome. All right. So there we go. So for this particular project, let me see if I can't do this. We are making a wrap bracelet. And so um, we're just doing two warps where we're going to fit random sized and styled beads. So from square beads to round beads to seed beads to check beads to I have a whole plethora of yumminess over here. But yeah, just that simple. So practice, don't, you know, don't get a fluster if your warps are not tight on the first try. Um, we always say to practice. And when you're working with a big loom, like the large wisdom warrior, um, give yourself some grace and just practice, uh, you know, maybe, maybe even get some yarn, you know, like something that's not all that expensive that you can play around with. Okay. All right. I, um, am super excited to get going on the wrap bracelet. Next, I'm going to come in and show you how I got started and then we'll just, uh, yeah, we'll be beating. We'll be beating for a while. <laughs> okay. See you right back here.